All right, I know y'all were probably expecting me for this one because, well, I've done most of these videos, but I don't know shit about Sailor Moon. Uh, yell at me, I don't care. So instead, Crystal's gonna be doing this one. Crystal? Uh, hi. Personally, I am honored to take up the stand arrow and stab all of the senshi with it. This time around, I'm going full Shoujo's Bizarre Adventure and giving all of your favorite Sailor Senshi stands of their own. There's no better place to start than with the Moon Princess herself, Usagi. After learning that she's the reincarnation of Princess Serenity, manifesting a stand probably won't be that big of a shocker. Plus, I have the feeling that Usagi wouldn't mind having someone else to order around or do her dirty work, you know? I mean, it's a vibe. I, I wouldn't mind that either. That would be nice. Somebody please do my laundry. But look, Usagi's stand isn't about trading blows. Just like its user, this stand is built for healing and love. And some loves kill. White Rabbit has two forms. By day, White Rabbit looks just like a cute little bunny. It's a bit of a crybaby, and it'd probably hang out with Zenitsu Sparrow stand from our Demon Slayer stands video. This little bun may cry even more than Usagi, but its tears hold a special power. They're able to heal and purify anyone they touch. Except Mineta, guys. Nothing, nothing can purify Mineta. I know this isn't about My Hero Academia, but I stand by my choice. The daytime form of White Rabbit may be up to some of Usagi's early capers, like fighting off Shingo's hypnotic pet rabbit that actually kind of looks a lot like this stand. Evil bunny doppelgangers aside, White Rabbit probably couldn't face off against Dio's forces during the day. I mean, Dio's a vampire, but this stand also really shines in the moonlight. That's when it reaches its full potential. When the sun goes down and the moon hangs high in the sky, White Rabbit leans into those were-rabbit vibes and goes full Donnie Darko. Except like, you know, a cute, beautiful anime version of the bunny from Donnie Darko, minus the hot Jake Gyllenhaal accessory, which, when you think about it, add a rose and a mask and take off that shirt and- Okay, I'll sit my thirsty ass down now, okay? Hey, this is the female equivalent of a Kurt video, I gotta represent. In this evolved form, its combat ability is much improved. Think Miracle from the most recent season of My Hero Academia. It can elegantly dodge and deflect just about any attack that comes its way, but since Usagi is more of a lover than a fighter, White Rabbit still focuses on healing. Like its daytime form, this stand's power is all about the tears, but when night falls, those tears are weaponized. When White Rabbit activates its special move, Tears for Fears, its tears turn into evil-seeking bullets. They basically dogpile enemies, clinging to them and wrapping them in a warm, watery cocoon that immobilizes them and weights them down. It's sort of like Koichi's Echoes Act 3, but with tears. Usagi can also use Tears for Fears to track hidden enemies, since the tears rush towards evil like heat-seeking bullets. That would have been a very handy ability to have when the Bujerati crew was facing off against Notorious B.I.G. But what White Rabbit really loves is a good pose. This is JoJo's after all. For White Rabbit's ultimate move, Surrealistic Pillow, it vogues while staring wistfully at a full moon. Come on, Vogue, let your bunny move to the music. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Not that kind of voguing, JoJo kind of voguing. <laughs> voguing, it's a funny word, come on. Once that happens, White Rabbit's tears spread far and wide, cleansing any enemies or evildoers they encounter and purifying their hearts. Remember in the Pokemon movie when all of the Pokemon basically cried Ash back to life after he turned to stone? It looks kind of like that. White Rabbit's tears can soften even the hardest of hearts. Even Bakugo. I am not over that movie, okay? So yes, I'm gonna bring up Bakugo a lot. He's, he's like my main now. Deal with it. But wait a minute, how did Usagi get here in the first place? She's just a normal high schooler. Well, everything changed when she encountered this next pair of stand users, Luna and Artemis. There's nothing I love more than an animal stand user. Shout out to Iggy. You may not be the best boy, that's Rohan, but you are a good boy. Good boy trademark. So I'm taking a cue from that exceptional mutt and giving Luna and Artemis a stand of their own. Salt and Peppa. This shared stand ability requires both cats to be present in order to activate. Like in Yaba from Stardust Crusaders and Diamond is Unbreakable, these feline celestial guardians possess rarefied knowledge of both the Moon Kingdom and Stando Pawa. They prowl the streets of Tokyo looking for mites to chase, keyboards to sit on, and potential stand users to awaken. But just like in JoJo's, potential stand users must meet a very specific set of criteria in order to awaken their stand. 
In JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, you have to have a strong constitution, and, well, when you're stabbed by the stand arrow, if you do, you get your own punch ghost. If you don't, you f***ing die. But the test Luna and Artemis put potential stand users through is way more harrowing than death, yes, I know. Cats. They make you watch Cats, the movie. You know how you can call, like, your cat forever, like, pss, 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 begging it to sit on your lap? And then for no reason at all, it goes to sit on your roommate's face, who is in fact allergic to it. Yeah, Salt and Peppa is just as fickle and confusing. And by confusing, I mean he's like all cats, an evil feline overlord out to torture you psychologically by scratching your favorite gaming chair and making you watch slowly. Let's say Luna and Artemis think you're a potential stand user. Salt and Peppa will appear before you as a totem pole of living lucky cat statues, one black and one white. When you get close enough, because, I mean, who wouldn't try to pet a cat? That's how they get you. They get you to submit to the purr. <sighs> I love cats. They own me. Salt and Peppa activates cat scratch fever and lays into you with its sharp little claws. Then the test begins. You have to make both cats happy with a series of items that appear. And if you have ever encountered a cat in your life, you know that making one cat happy is impossible. So you're already dead. Let's just okay, let's, let's just quit now. But if you, you know, you're stubborn and you want to continue, fine. One likes tuna, the other likes whitefish. One likes feather toys, the other likes catnip mice. And there's no way to tell which likes which. If you choose wisely, Luna and Artemis will acknowledge your lowly existence by sitting on your lap, awakening your stand. Meow, shin accomplished. Anyway, that's what happens if you succeed. If you choose poorly, well, a much darker fate lies in store for you, my friend. Have you ever heard of toxoplasmosis? It's a parasitic infection that many human cat owners have from cleaning out their cat's litter box. It's mostly harmless, but it can have a mind-altering effect on its host, because leave it to cats to make hallucinogenic doo-doo. Some even say it makes cat owners more loving and deferential to their pets. You see what I mean by alien overlords? Aliens. It's aliens. Anyway, that's creepy enough, but in the world of Sailor Moon, it's way worse. If you don't develop a stand, get ready to become their zombie slave. Salt and Peppa's special move, Black Magic, infects enemies with the parasite, and their victim lives out the rest of their life under the thrall of their feline emperors. Slash alien overlords. That is us, guys. That's, that's the human race. We're already there. We, we, we didn't get a stand, did we? Back to the other aliens, because now that I think about it, really, all the Sailor Scouts are aliens. Well, alien reincarnations. Let's not go there. I go deep into that in the timeline, and boy, is it mixed up. So, Sailor Mars. I have a feeling Sailor Mars would be right on the edge of getting toxoplasmosis before pulling through to manifest a totally bad stand. Rei Hino is a passionate shrine maiden before she's awakened as Sailor Mars. She puts her discipline and training to use in the form of her stand, Madonna. This powerful but ephemeral stand is made up of thousands of Shinto papers called Shide. It's a colony-type stand with pyromancy powers similar to those of Avdol's hot chicken, Magician's Red. Both Madonna and Rei are driven by holy vengeance and a desire to cleanse the world of evil. But where Usagi cleanses the world through healing tears, Rei's vengeance comes in the form of purifying flames. Madonna is pretty much a force of nature. Its Shida papers move a lot like Yubaba's paper soldiers in Spirited Away. They can swarm like a flock of birds and sentence enemies to death by a thousand paper cuts. That's a very annoying way to die. But as strong as Madonna is at longer ranges, don't think you'll have an advantage if you find Rey first. This stand has a hive mind intelligence like the Borg in Star Trek. With so many brains working together, Madonna can analyze and predict its foe's moves. To enhance this precognitive ability, Madonna can use the special move True Blue to summon holy flames in the palm of its hand. Rey can gaze into these purplish blue flames to get a glimpse of the future and see an enemy from afar. And she doesn't need to destroy a camera to do it. Sorry, Joseph, you got robbed with Hermit Purple. If Rey has to square up in close quarters, Madonna's Sheeta papers come together and morph into a close-range humanoid stand with its special move, Material Girl. In its Material Girl form, yeah, we were going in that direction, guys. Come on, it's JoJo's. Madonna. Hello. Madonna can throw Ora Oras and Muda Mudas with the best of them. 
But using its special move Borderline, it can trap evildoers in a deadly flaming paper prison for some extra pizzazz. If the enemy tries to cross the line, they'll either be shredded to ribbons or burnt to ashes. Whichever comes first. Madonna can also use Borderline to protect itself and Ray, kind of like how Moral uses his smoky jail technique in Hunter x Hunter. To top it off, this stand manages to kick ass and wear heels, just like its formidable user. Madonna is a burn first, ask questions later kind of stand, which means it benefits from having teammates with more subtle abilities, like Sailor Mercury. We can all appreciate Mars's traditional spiritual powers, but Mercury is bringing something a little more modern and high tech. Mercury herself is a genius, and she puts that big brain to work in dangerous situations with her cutting edge technological stand. Grimes. Grimes is a tiny, long range stand that flies around, gathering intel on enemies while Mercury tracks and controls it from a safe distance. It's kinda like Harrow from Gundam, just cute. Like a cute little BB 8 looking thing. That, that's what I mean, like, like BB 8 Grimes. BB Grimes. As Grimes hovers around, it pings Mercury when it recognizes somebody as a stand user and tags them as a threat. Yes, a stand that detects stands. No more wondering if something weird is the work of an enemy stand user. I mean, the fabulous clothes that stand users wear are always a dead giveaway, but Grimes lets Mercury know for sure. Once Grimes scans an opponent, it gives Mercury all the details she would ever need or want about them. And their stand. She can pull up all the data on a tablet, kind of like a 21st century version of Babyface, the laptop stand from part 5. Okay, so Grimes is great at performing recon. Mercury's a team player, you know? But what happens if her stand gets spotted and has to defend itself? Well, it can't really attack, but it can completely digitize its opponent and transport them to its own pocket dimension. So I guess that works. It's like Tron, piece by piece. Grimes scans their opponent until they're trapped in her frozen digital world called Oblivion. Once they're inside, they must pass a series of trials. They basically play Jeopardy. It's kind of like the younger Darby's brother stand, Atum. But instead of playing, oh, that's a baseball, you have to answer trivia questions. Hey, Mercury reads a lot of books, so you better hope you know as much as her if you want to escape. For every question you get wrong, you get further encased in ice. Too many wrong answers, and that's it. You're officially stuck in oblivion as an ice sculpture. Sure, Grimes could just try digitizing an enemy stand user from the beginning before it ever comes to blows, but it's not that simple. You ever try to download something on really bad internet? Yeah, imagine sitting there watching that little bar slowly fill up, only there's a stand user trying to kill you. Downloading an enemy takes time. So, Grimes needs to either keep dodging or have an ally distract her victim before they get a chance to retaliate. Thankfully, we've got the perfect stand user to hold everyone's attention. Yes, I'm talking about none other than our bi icon, Tuxedo Mask. I'm not even sorry. Mamoru's already a posing pretty boy, so I think he'd fit in pretty well in the JoJo's universe. But to complete his JoJoification, I say we give him a wearable stand with a wild ability. First off, Mamoru's famous tuxedo is his stand, but like Kill la Kill style. I mean, think of Senketsu. Ryoko's sentient school uniform gives her incredible powers. Similarly, Mamoru is nothing without his stand, N Sync. This wearable stand has a strong personality and it brings out one of Mamoru's worst personality traits. You ever notice how Mamoru is always making a dramatic entrance at the last possible second? You know, after Usagi's taken all of the damage or been captured by a Nega monster? Mm -hmm. Well, N Sync turns Mamoru's annoying tardiness into a strength. Mamoru's stand gives him a phase walking ability that allows him to quickly teleport from place to place. It's sort of like how Diavolo experiences King Crimson's time skips, combined with Okuyasu's Zahando ability. N Sync essentially deletes the space between point A and point B, allowing Mamoru to appear in a new location instantaneously using his special move. Pop. The tardier he is, the more powerful his stand and the quicker his phasing. That sounds strong, but N Sync does have some limitations. It won't allow Mamoru to phase unless he's fashionably late, and Pop can only transport Mamoru within a 10 mile radius. But considering how many big bads seem to be creeping around Usagi's neighborhood, there's still plenty of negatives to kick. When Mamoru and N Sync finally make it to the scene, he can use a few other abilities. Bye 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 allows him to phase others to a pocket dimension of his own making. This powerful tool is sort of like the Mangyeko's Sharingan Sukuyomi ability in Naruto. If Mamoru strikes you with his cane, then N Sync will teleport you to a hell dimension where you'll be forced to wear ill fitting polyester suits as you wait for death to find you. 
But if Mamoru grazes you with his rose, NSYNC will use no strings attached and phase you into a lush field of roses. There, you can safely and comfortably await the, no doubt, tardy return of your shoujo dream boy, Mamoru. While NSYNC's Bye 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 ability may be best for defense, it can also use pop over short distances. Whether it's phasing to dodge punches or to land a stealthy blow on its opponent, facing off against NSYNC would be about as annoying as Bucciarati's fight against Seko. Most enemies would be powerless against NSYNC's ability, but Mamoru does have another major weakness. He's easily manipulated by a certain tiny stand user. Now, Chibiusa may be from the future, but she uses the oldest trick in the book to get her way. Emotional manipulation. Whether it's begging, crying, or employing good old-fashioned trickery, Chibiusa always manages to win out over the adults around her, especially when they're her parents, Usagi and Mamoru. And her stand, Pussycat Doll, is the ultimate tool for getting her way. Pussycat Doll allows Chibiusa to gain control over her enemies or friends. Like a creepy Geppetto, this stand steals a bit of its target's life energy and shapes it into a doll using its ability, buttons. Once Pussycat Doll has done its job, Chibiusa can then do, you know, pretty much whatever she wants to her target. From making it have some kissy time with another doll victim, to sitting down for a nice tea party with Miss Nesbitt and friends. Or she could, you know, rain the wrath of a vengeful god upon them. Ah, uh, my childhood. As she plays, Chibiusa's emotions are multiplied and transferred to her victims. She can make people become infatuated, break into a rage, or crumble into a sobbing mess. It's all just fun and games for Chibiusa anyway, regardless of the lasting emotional damage her stand may cause. Pussycat Doll itself looks a lot like Sabrina from Pokemon. And sure enough, that weird psychic-type trainer also turned Misty and Brock into dolls. Much like Trisha's stand, Spice Girl, Pussycat Doll is able to freely communicate with Chibiusa, guiding her transformation into a formidable stand user. But it's Chibiusa's job to temper the more volatile aspects of her stand's personality, Still, she's only a kid, so things can get out of hand pretty quickly. I don't think it'd take long for Usagi to get dollified by Pussycat Doll. And I have a feeling Luna P might get jealous and fall victim to the stand's whims. Hopefully, Chibiusa and Pussycat Doll won't have to see a lot of battle, but if they do, Pussycat Doll can act of its own accord like Spice Girl to protect Chibiusa. With its ability, don't ya? It can attack an enemy and transfer Chibiusa's feelings of fear to them, leaving them unable to fight or it could cause them to become overwhelmed with panic or anxiety, incapacitating them. That sounds like my regular Monday. <laughs> God damn it, was it you, Pussycat Doll? In any case, until Chibiusa is old enough to understand herself, her stand, and how it impacts others, she and Pussycat Doll won't be able to meet their full potential. But Chibiusa is a quick learner, so it's just a matter of time. Maybe we'll see a Pussycat Doll act too somewhere down the line. Anyway, there are endless characters from Sailor Moon who could use a JoJo's makeover. Neptune and Uranus are begging for it. And oh my god, Mistress Nine. Can you imagine Mistress Nine? Ugh, step on me, Apocalypse Queen. Just, just, you're just standing there and suddenly you start hearing. La, 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 la. Yeah, sing me to death. That's how I want to go. I'm just, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Back to normal. So yeah, if you want another video like this one, let us know and comment below with the stands you'd give your favorite Sailor Moon characters. I'm Crystal Marie and this is Get in the Robot, made in NYC, because we can't move to Japan or, you know, leave our apartments right now. Good.